on February 19, 2013, a maintenance worker at the Stay on Main Hotel in Los Angeles checked on a 1,000 gallon tank on the hotel's roof. It was responsible for providing guest rooms, the kitchen, and a coffee shop. Guests had complained of a strange color and unusual taste, and as he opened the hatch, there to his horror was the explanation. Elisa Lamb. The LAPD is not calling this a homicide right now. Investigators are still calling this a suspicious death. Elisa Lamb, a traveling student missing for 19 days, laid face up in the water. Her clothes were floating right beside her. The maintenance discovery might have put an end to the police's search, but with no answer, how Lamb got there in the first place became a cold mystery. Elisa Lamb was a hardworking student, the daughter of immigrants from Hong Kong. She was studying at her hometown university in British Columbia in Canada. But to get away from her books, she planned a trip to the sunny shores of California. Traveling on buses and the Amtrak rail network, Lamb visited San Diego, where she posted pictures on social media of a day at the zoo before heading to Los Angeles where she checked into the downtown stay on Main Hotel, an establishment popular with young travelers, not only because of its budget, but also due to its somewhat notorious reputation under its previous name, the Cecil Hotel. On January 28, 2013, Lamb checked in and sticking to her budget, chose to share a room, but it wasn't long into her new roommates raised eyebrows at her odd behavior. So much so that after two days, Lamb moved into a single room. Back in Canada, Lamb's family had remained nervous about her traveling on her own. Diagnosed with bipolar disorder and depression, Lamb was on a series of medication, but could not always rely upon to take them. To appease her family's nerves, Lamb agreed to contact them every day while she was away. On January 31st, the day Lamb was supposed to check out, they heard nothing. Lamb had written an online blog in which she had openly discussed feelings of despair, a sense of hopelessness. One post, you're always haunted by the idea. You're wasting your life. While never suicidal, Lamb had gone missing once before. And so it wasn't long before Lamb's family flew to LA to assist the police who had began their search for a missing person. Last person to have spoken to Lamb was thought to be Katie Orphan, the owner of a local bookstore, who spoke of a bubbly and lively young lady buying books for her family and friends. Police had no probable cause, and so legally they couldn't search every room. But they brought in dogs that could not pick up Lamb's scent. A week after her last sighting, police began to distribute flyers both in the local and online. The public was not aware of her disappearance, but no one had seen Alyssa Lamb. The Cecil Hotel, an infamous hotel. First opened in 1924, the Cecil Hotel was a desirable landmark in LA. Its marble lobby, stained with glass windows, exotic plants, all showed off the vast investment in the new place. But just a few years later, the world suffered the Great Depression and while the hotel remained open and popular, the neighborhood in which it sat became known as Skid Row. Over the next decades, it was said 10,000 homeless people resided in a four-mile radius of its walls. It was the strange and morbid events going on. Over time, this would lead into a keen eye for the hotel. The CISA Hotel has a infamous past with several noted murders and suicides occurring within its walls. The first known death at the Cecil in 1927, when Percy Cook shot himself in the room, followed four years later after W.C. Norton, who took poison capsules. More suicide cases in the 1940s and 1950s kept its reputation intact. And one incident in 1962 was particularly widely reported when a woman jumped from her ninth or room, killing herself and a pedestrian down below. In 1964, a long-term resident 
Pigeon Goldie was found in her room. She had been raped and stabbed. A suspect by the name of Jack was found walking the nearby streets covered in blood, but later was acquitted. And the murder remains unsolved. Further deaths followed, and so the CISO Hotel's reputation was fixed. But it was the presence of two notorious serial killers that granted most fascination. Richard Ramirez was known as the Night Stalker, a killer who, in the 1980s, terrorized the city surrounding area. Ramirez went to prison for the deaths of 13 people, according to a hotel clerk. Ramirez, a regular face in the Skid Row downtown LA, often stayed at the hotel, and it is said he may have very well carried out some of his most gruesome crimes there. Austrian killer Jack Hunter Wigger also stayed at the CISO Hotel, possibly to recreate Ramirez's crimes, killing three sex workers during his stay. In 2011, part of the hotel renamed itself the Stay on Main, which is located on Main Street. But with popular television shows such as American Horror Story continuing to base stories on the place, it seems there were no escaping its gruesome past. The viral video. Soon after Lamb's disappearance, the police released footage taken from the hotel surveillance of her in the elevator. The four minute video went viral around the world, compounding the mystery of what might had happened. In the video, Lamb is standing in the elevator, but seems to be aware of someone outside. She stands way back, but tentatively peering around the corner. Lamb then steps in and out the elevator, pressing buttons, as keen to make the elevator go. She then steps outside, her hands gesturing to someone disappears, and the doors open and close several times. Tens of millions of people watch the unsettling video, gathering more and more theories about her fate. A few days later, the maintenance worker was sent to check the water tower on the hotel's roof. The theories. The police could never assert how Lamb ended up in the water tank, the clothes she was wearing in the elevator, and some belongings floating around her in there with her. The official reason for the death was accidental drowning, but there have been plenty of theories as to what happened. The neighborhood in which she died pointed many to the fact that she must have taken psychedelic drugs or that the elevator video was evidence of some sort of supernatural presence in the hotel. There was no sign of assault and a toxicology report pointed to the fact Lamb hadn't taken her full medication in the hours leading up to her death. And so it was concluded that she suffered a tragic and manic side effect to missing her pills, leading to her climbing into the tank and drowning. However, Santiago Lopez, the man who found her, described how hard it was for someone not only to open the tank, but to also get up on the roof, then climb further ladders to get there. In court, the Lamb family filed a wrongful death suit against the hotel. Pedro Tovar, an engineer who worked at the hotel, further testified that the only employees were able to deactivate the alarm on the roof. And that had an alarm been triggered, anyone at the front desk would have been immediately aware of it. 